we tend to use the statistics that suit us at any any one time the truth of the matter is bbc one and itv one are the two big mainstream channels i always say this about them they're the only members of a small very small club and although of course they're competitive with each other i also believe strongly that they have a lot of interests in common and their interests are that even in a world of of almost limitless choice the internet video games multi-channel television all the different things if you like could compete for your attention in the evening you know competing as it were for eyeballs mm -hmm. the common interest between the two is that there's still places where people gather for large shared experiences and which is come why together, eight ten twelve million audiences get annoyed when things like the x-factor are scheduled against strictly really come dancing audiences don't seem to appreciate that do they because well again as, the, as the, uh, absolutely and, and as somebody who's Who's, who's run ITV1 and BBC1 and I think I'm the only person to have done that in fact uh, I do sometimes find myself wondering could they behave if you like towards each other in a slightly more complementary way yeah. rather than in a more competitive way if you're in the first case putting the audience's interests first and, and I think that uh, I don't think audiences like being given hard choices uh, having said that you've got a hard choice every night of the week because there's so many different channels mm. and of course many many people have the ability to time shift program you know record them and so on and so forth just quick question before we take the travel is is simon you're i know that you're handling the simon cowell negotiations for oh i assume you are i say i know that's actually yeah. simply an assumption but for the next series of the x factor yeah lot speculation is he coming back or not well I, I, the, it has i'm afraid to remain speculation because so he's because not certain then well, he's not definitely the coming x back. factor is coming back and is back in the itv1 schedule this autumn we know simon that simon will be closely involved in it as he always is closely can you involved say in that it? he will definitely be on the judging panel for every episode of the I, x factor I, i'm not in a position i know i sound like a politician here i don't want to sound like an invasive politician i'm not in a position to confirm or deny any of the individuals will be sitting in those chairs or, or, or on the X Factor this morning. Therefore, but, well, as Peter, soon as I am, I will. If I may say so, what you're saying is Simon Cowell has yet to sign a deal, a contract for the X Factor. He's yet to agree to appear on the next series. Well, as I say, we have a uh, an agreement which has been uh, announced, publicly announced for both the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. They will be on ITV screens for yes, the next three way. years. So, but that would be, a, right, that would be a disaster yeah, yeah. for ITV if and Simon Cowell walked no, out of the British no, no, one. No, 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 no you, should, you shouldn't look at it that way, Richard. And, and of course, you see, and anybody who reads the newspapers and the tabloid newspapers will read different things about them every day of the week. I mean, I know in the last few days I've read articles telling me such and such a Lily person is going to be in the X yeah, I've read that the, in the X Factor such and such a person isn't Cheryl Cole's going to be doing the X Factor in America no she isn't yes she is no she isn't it varies day to day um, and I would advise anybody what's your dream line I would advise anybody to take it with a very large <laughs> pinch or even a bucket of salt until a proper announcement is put okay. out as it will be uh, but I am right he may or may not uh, be on the show uh, 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 exactly what I've, uh, okay. I've just said the show will be there and when we're ready to announce who'll be on it we'll, we'll announce what's on it okay. what, what were you saying what's my what's my dream dream lineup line for the x factor panel well, I, I, what can i say i don't know i'm a big bob dylan fan but i don't <laughs> think i don't think I, I don't think i'd book him as the as a as a judge on x factor uh, Peter uh, Finch, uh, i would just to meet him actually uh, the director of television will take the travel and reload your questions to him Lindsay hipgrave what's happening there's there? an accident on the m1 northbound at junction six bricket with the exit slip road there is partly blocked that's if you're heading off the m1 northbound to get onto the northbound a405 so expect delays there there. It isn't causing any queues back on the main carriageway, though. The M25 clockwise, that's queuing from Junction 26 Waltham Abbey to Junction 28 at the Brick Street Roundabout. That's after an earlier breakdown in the roadworks, but that has been moved now. The M3 southbound, there's a vehicle fire between Camberley and Farnborough, Junctions 4 to 4A, one lane closed off there. Still queuing on the A102 from the Woolwich Road flyover to the northbound Blackwall Tunnel. That's following an earlier closure of the A12, but that's all clear now. And in London delays because of a problem on the Trafalgar Square roundabout the A4 two lanes closed at the roundabout because of a gas leak and that's causing long delays on all approaches Lindsay Hipgrave 5 Live Travel
bbc.co.uk slash five live the place where you can find out what's on when Ireland have won and bats are being thrown in the air on five live five live sports extra and download podcasts how England could have done with this man when they were stunned by Ireland in the World Cup and if you miss something Andrew Flintoff you've got some exciting news I've been chatting today about doing a radio show on five live have a listen through our best bits we're going to get some big guests in mm-hmm. uh, some of the sports people to give their views on the week of sport just click the best bits box at the top of the page bbc.co.uk slash five live on digital and online this is bbc radio five live with richard bacon coming up next five live drive weekdays from four and on drive today peter and asthma will be discovering why women believe that the deeper a man's voice the more likely he is to be unfaithful Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think it might be because, I guess, men with deeper voices are quite uh, attractive, I would have thought. Maybe it may <laughs> simply be uh, down to that. But we'll find out a bit later. Peter Fincham is here, the director of television at ITV. Loads and loads of questions. Greg, we'll fly through as many as we can. Greg in Plymouth, when will you admit that you're wrong about Daybreak a pro- um, uh, and replace it with GMTV, a programme that I watched and I miss? Well, I'm sorry to Greg that he misses GMTV, um, but Daybreak, uh, um, early day still for Daybreak. We're proud of Daybreak. It's been growing in audiences, getting more popular in, in recent months. And and I think... Still this quite is, a long way behind BBC I Breakfast. This, this is one of those things in, in television that that if, if nothing ever changed in television, then people would be quickly be on our back saying, nothing's ever changed. You've never replaced anything. You've never brought in anything new. I quite understand, though, that uh, particularly at breakfast time, we, people are, to some degree, creatures of habit at, BB, uh, at breakfast, and it takes a while to adjust and, and to adapt. But, but but I think Daybreak, as, Daybreak's on its way and I think it's doing well. It's not worked as well as you had hoped. Well, you, 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 that, that's to imply that we had a kind of trajectory for Daybreak that was, if you like, a predetermined one. That's not the case. We knew perfectly well when we when we brought Daybreak in that there would be fans, and Greg is one of them, loyal fans of GMTV who said, where's my GMTV? If you go back 17 years before that, you'd have found exactly the same thing when GMTV took over from TVA. Okay. So it's safe. At Daybreak, you're committed to yes. Daybreak for a for the long we're, term. A, we're absolutely committed to daybreak and to, and to with broadening Christine, it out. With Christine it, and Adrian. A, 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 absolutely. Okay. Uh, this enraged listener, I haven't got his name, says, oh. how can Peter Fincham possibly justify axing the, axing the South Bank show? Unique, consistently mind-stretching, covering everything from Pavarotti to Iggy Pop. Envied the world over. Well, uh, in a sense, I can refer back to my my previous uh, uh, answer that, uh, you know, television needs change. Television schedules need to evolve. The South Bank show uh, ran for 32 years. If you'd said to the people involved and indeed to its its viewers and its fans at the beginning, this is going to have a run of 32 years, you'd say, well, that's fantastic. That's most fantastic news. But of course, the longer that run is, the more it seems a sadness when it comes to an end. This spring, we are, in fact, introducing a new uh, documentary in Art Strand called Perspectives on ITV1 so we have plans in this area but it it comes back to the same thing a television schedule that never changes will eventually ossify you know you've got to keep it moving on Wendy in Worthing please tackle Peter Fincham ITV's director of programmes on the proposed longer ad breaks rumoured to be up to 12 minutes long is that true? well we uh, um, we want ad breaks to be at the right level for viewers, if you like, and we have no interest in making them too long such that they would alienate viewers. We're a commercial broadcaster. Again, go back to the BBC. Unlike the BBC, we have to earn a living. We have to earn a living uh, through advertising. But the idea that left to our own devices, we would increase the length of ad breaks is not the case. And what I'm there for as director of television, I'm responsible for the programmes. I'm passionate about the programmes and about there being enough airtime for for our programmes to to you know, entertain our viewers. Uh, product placement is a new one or two people mentioning that on the text. New to ITV, the law has been changed. This morning, last week, had I think a is it a coffee machine in the kitchen? It, it, is that what they had? Absolutely right. Yes, um, Huntry Gusto, it's called. Is yeah. it? Well, get, get a plug in on yeah, the BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell you who the maker was. Okay, so I think it's a hundred thousand pounds you've got for that for a three. Not that deal. plug. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting their money's worth today. Um, so that, that's a good thing, is it? And what what are the programmes on ITV have plans to include product placement? Well, 
I, again, I think we have to be realistic. Um, uh, uh, our programmes have to be paid for from somewhere. I think that uh, the, you know, the, the bulk of where they're paid for will be from the advertising that exists in the ad breaks. But I think we're unrealistic to think that forever and a day that separation can be kept absolute. Viewers, although they may not be aware of it, are used to seeing product placement. They see it in American series. They see it in, in American films all the time. The job for us is to introduce it uh, uh, with...